Hey, what's up, movie people? I hope you're doing well. We got another episode of movie news I'm bringing to you right now. We got a decent amount to talk about today, so let's hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. It helps out a lot. But let's get right to the news. All right, first up on our news, we got a new cast member just joined Beetlejuice 2. Willem Dafoe has just joined the cast. That's very exciting. I've I've loved Willem Dafoe for so many years, and I hope he gets to do a crazy role in Beetlejuice 2 because he does crazy really well. Like, you see him play the Green Goblin, he did so well in that. And I think Beetlejuice 2 has a really stacked cast for next year. I cannot wait to see what Tim Burton does with that movie. Moving on to our next piece, we got Angus Cloud and Catherine Newton have been cast in Radio Silence's next film. It's going to be like a monster movie. The film also stars Melissa Barrera, Dan Stevens, and Will Catlett. Uh, this actually sounds like a really good cast. A really young cast. Um, we have Angus Cloud from Euphoria, Catherine Newton from Ant-Man and the Lost Quantum Mania, and she's in The Society, which was on Netflix for one season. And I think that this could be a really good movie. Radio Silence does really good with their uh, little like horror movies. So I'm excited to see what they're kind of going to make out of this. It's uh, There's no new details about the movie. Supposedly, it's just going to be a monster movie. So we'll see how that does. But I'm excited that those two join the cast because I think those two are awesome. But our biggest news of the of these last few days is Dwayne Johnson is going to return as Luke Hobbs in Fast X. I'm really excited about this because I feel like um, the best Fast movie is Fast 5 in my opinion. And it has uh, Luke Hobbs in it, Dwayne Rock Johnson. And then like, kind of like uh, Fast 8 and uh, 9 without The Rock... I've just not been as good. I think you need The Rock to play against Vin Diesel because I think it makes the movie 100% better. And The Rock just does so well in these movies. Like in Hobbs and Shaw, he was great. I loved his comedic timing in that movie. The movie was a little long, but The Rock in any of these fast movies it really just makes the movie so much better. So I'm happy that he's returning, but I wish they were, would have kept this under the wraps because it would have been a huge surprise in the theaters. But I am happy he's returning. Next up, we got The Flash has a completed runtime. It's going to be two hours and 24 minutes. Pretty sure the movie is all completed now. Uh, I've had I've heard good reactions to this movie, and I'm happy it's long because that means we get a full, complete story. Uh, these superhero movies are going to be like all two and a half hours this summer, which I'm happy about personally because the longer they are, I think the better they are. Uh, some of them don't follow that trend, but I think most of them are better if they're longer. Uh, next up, we have a little bit of like rumors. They're not, uh, this isn't like actually like real news, but it's going to be rumors of who's going to be in Superman Legacy. We have like cast members who auditioned and we're going to see who maybe gets it in a couple weeks. But these are some people who have auditioned for Lois Lane being Emma Mackey, Rachel Brosnahan, Phoebe Denver, and then Samara Weaving. That's basically all the people that auditioned that are known to have auditioned for Lois Lane. Uh, out of these four, I would have Emma Mackey because I think she is a really good performer and she's excellent in anything that she does. And then for um, Clark Kent, Superman himself, we had David Cornsweet and Nicholas Holt. I think Nicholas Holt should be in Superman Legacy. I'm not sure if he should be Clark Kent, though. I see him more as Lex Luthor. But I think James Gunn is going to nail the casting either way whenever that comes out. We'll probably get the casting in a couple months or so, I'm hoping, because they're going to have to start pre-production soon on that one. Uh, next up, we got Hellboy, the Crooked Man, has already wrapped filming. Uh, this is some interesting news, in my opinion, because this just started filming not too long ago. And I'm wondering why it finished so fast and how they did it so fast. Because it's kind of worrying me, because like if it wrapped this fast, I don't know how good it's going to be. Because literally, I swear, I just talked about this news. It started filming like a month and a half ago or like two months. I don't know how it finished ra filming so fast. Maybe it's a really short movie. Uh, I don't know, though. We'll have to wait and see on that one. But it had a really short filming period. I'm interested to see what's up with that. And then if you want to know, Avatar The Way of Water is finally making its way to streaming. It's going to be Disney. It's on Disney Plus and HBO Max on the same day, June 7th, because of their uh, deal with Fox. They got to put it on both. And it's the Fox movie. So if you have Disney Plus or HBO Max, look for Avatar The Way of Water on June 7th, which it had a long theatrical run. So go look for it. Go watch it again. It's a fantastic movie. I loved it. I already own it on digital. It's really great. And we have a couple more uh, news stories to cover. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, its final runtime is 2 hours and 34 minutes, making it the longest movie 
of the franchise. That is that's that's a long movie, especially for Indiana Jones. That's surprisingly long. That's longer than The Flash. That's like the longest movie. Uh, we have confirmed in June because it's longer than The Flash, Spider-Verse, which is really surprising because Spider-Verse should be longer than Indiana Jones. But I get that they do have a, a decent amount to cover in this, to, such as like all the time travel going on. But I'm happy that Harrison Ford's his final send-off is going to be a long movie. And James Mangold is directing, as I said. So we're going to have a really great final send-off for him. I really hope it's good. It's premiering at Cannes, I think, this week. So I might cover the reactions if you guys want me to cover the reactions. I might do a, a one single video on Can though, just to cover the reactions of Indiana Jones, Killers of the Flower Moon, and I think Elemental screening there. So I might cover those reactions. Let me know in the comments if you want me to cover that. Uh, last piece of news is actually going to be on Elemental. Just a little fun fact for you guys. The visuals of Elemental required over 151,000 computer cores to be rendered. And in comparison, Toy Story 4 only took 55,000. And Monster University, 24. And then Monster Zeke, uh, 672. Toy Story, the one, their first movie, 294. That shows you how big the visuals are on uh, Elemental. It's going to be a visual feast, in my opinion. And Pixar must have worked really hard on this movie because I guess it's like they're most like it has the most visuals of all their movies like it took the most computer rendering and stuff so that's exciting you know i've always wanted pixar to go back to their form and this is kind of reminding me of zootopia which is a film that i really think it's great and i do hope it's good we're gonna as i said we're gonna get the first reactions in a week or so so i can't wait but let me know what you guys thought in the news uh, the past couple days and i'll see you guys in the next one peace out